Hi, we're back for session three of beginning Egan matrix programming. And this time we want to talk about how to create barrels, those very important controls that you see all the time in the presets that let you set parameters of various kinds in your patches. Let's get right to it this time. Uh, though first, if you notice, I have a MIDI controller set up the Kilomix that I got from Lipold uh, when I ordered my uh, Continuum. You also might use the Arturia Beat Step. I think that's supported and other devices that various people have programmed to do various things. But this uh, MIDI controller can be very useful in helping you set these parameters uh, easily while you're playing. If we look at the screen now, I've brought up the editor, and we have the uh, initial patch that we created the, where that brass-like patch where we modulated one, oscillated with another. We have here, if you notice, these little Roman numerals, one, two, three, and four. These are slots that I can create these uh, barrels and these controls. I also can do similar things with the Gen 1 and Gen 2 controls. So those can't be set to the nice graphics that uh, come uh, available in the editor uh, to set the, the barrels. To do this, we need to go down to this little edit um, function and bring up the editor. Now normally in the editor, you can type any text you like uh, that will be associated with your patch up to 256 characters, as it states here. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, text is uh, delimited by these uh, quotations. I found that uh, sometimes the extra quotations and bars are put in there. I'm not sure why, but um, I just remove them, to be honest, and put my own text in. And when it comes back up, I might do the same thing or keep the text within the quotes. So what we'll do is, uh, to, to set up a barrel, you just type in the Roman numeral you want associated with that barrel, an equal sign, and then some user-defined name that's going to be uh, printed uh, with the barrel. Uh, in our case, what we're going to want to do is, instead of using Y to control the modulation from 0 to 1, perhaps I want to write a patch where Y is not involved at all in setting that modulation. I want to set it to a fixed amount, but I want that amount to be able to be tuned through a, a dial easily to get it to a point where uh, I'm happy. So what I can do now to do that, when I type my I equals, let's say I want to label my barrel modulation, I'll type that in, and then I can say done. And all of a sudden, it creates a barrel with the default graphic, with this little triangle, uh, with the title that I typed in down there. Now, a barrel is going to go from a value of 0 to 127. All right, so it's basically a 7-bit MIDI control. Uh, we can create this to either scale it from 0 to 1 or... Uh, create it so that it'll create values from 0 to 127. But above the barrel will always be printed these numbers 0 to 127. And you can control that by uh, using your mouse. You can click on the little number there and set it directly to something you want. Or if you have your MIDI controller set up, and let me go and check mine here. If I go up here to MIDI, MIDI and Global Settings with the cog wheel, I see that my Kenton is connected, and so I can go over there and turn dial 1 that I've labeled, and that also, as you see, will change the setting of the, the barrel. By the way, I've noticed that when I connect this, uh, this Kenton controller up, if I do it when the editor is up, it doesn't actually connect. I have to 
get out of the editor, connect up my control, and then bring up the editor, and then it seems to connect fine. Perhaps it works differently on a Mac, but on my PC, that's the way it works. Okay, so I've set up the label and the graphic for the modulation, but I haven't associated it with anything. And to do that, I have to create a user-defined formula. So let me click on A. And the easiest way to associate a simple formula with the barrel is to go to this W control and where it says X1 there, you click that and then you can see I can associate, associate this with either the first, second, third, or fourth barrels or one of the gen uh, dials. And I can do it in two ways, uh, either as a range of 0 to 1 which is going to scale my value of that barrel from 0 to 1 in little increments. Or I can have it actually use the values that's printed above the control 0 to 127. Now in our case, since um, we're going to select 0 to 1, because we want to use uh, a function that's going to be equivalent to what we did with Y, we want to uh, take the barrel through a range of 0 to 1. And the way that will work is it will take whatever the constant value of that barrel is times the scale factor, which is 1, and then it will uh, multiply it by my uh, barrel range, whatever the barrel setting is. So now what I want to do is take this W and set it to 1. And remember, I can kind of try and get it right there, or 1 is w one of these predefined buttons that will get me right there. Now, um, what this is going to do is when the barrel is set at its minimum uh, amount, zero, obviously anything times zero is going to be zero, so that's going to wind up uh, having a value of zero. And if we type our formula A where Y is now, if we're set to the lowest value, I'm going to get that sign tone out. Anywhere I, anywhere I play now, because it's not dynamically triggering based on Y, it's triggering based on the setting of the barrel, which is zero at this point. So now I can maybe bring that up to a value of 21. Remember, it's not 20, 23 in this case. It's scaled that percentage of the way between zero and one as a relationship of where 20 is, 23 is, to 0 to 127. It can get a little confusing for you to think that way. I mean, it's easy to maybe know that 64 is the midpoint between 0 and 127, so perhaps that's 0 0.5 if I want to bring it to 64. Um, and let's play a little bit. Yeah, now we're kind of in that trumpet range where we said we wanted to be something like uh, 0.2 to 0.5 to be in the brassy range. But it, it'll be pretty much the same sound all over now. It'll change a little bit because remember in this formula, we have uh, this patch, we have Y actually controlling the waveform. Uh, and so as the waveform changes uh, through this modulation, I'm going to have a little bit of change. So I didn't get rid of all the change, but the basic tonal content now is consistent. So um, that's it. I have pretty much ha have a control now that I can uh, change my controller here. And uh, as I twiddle with that, I can change my value, but it's statically s set. So once I set it to value, I can play, and then I can change it. Um, so it's not quite the dynamic uh, level of changing as you move your finger, but don't always want to do that. Now one other thing I can do here is there is there's a number of pre-canned graphic symbols that come with the editor sometimes th ha that have more meaning than, uh, say, just a triangle here. To see those, I can go up to the cog wheel and select barrel styles. And now I can select all these different types of 
uh, categories where all these different graphics have been created. However, they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, going from 0 to 127, it's just they're labeled in different ways. Uh, a few of them, uh, the switches, uh, d do have a little special function where they'll switch uh, if it's not zero, for example. But uh, most all of the other ones are, are just going to show you zero to 127. So will the switch, but it will, it will switch on zero to one. Uh, the, the graphic will change. So let's uh, select one that maybe makes sense to us. Uh, actually, this one makes a little sense since our uh, sound uh, is going duller to brighter the way we have it set up now. If you notice, each one of these predefined graphics have a little code in front of them, 0, 3. So I can go, if I remember that, go back to my uh, editor, click the little house to get to the editor. Uh, well, not the editor, but the, the edit um, text uh, block. And now I can type in uh, 0, 3 here, an underscore and 0, 3, if I type the underscore, that means use whatever the graphic for the number associated with the number after it is. I can say done, and now that replaces my uh, default triangle with something that has uh, some meaning maybe to what we're doing. Now when I f have a more dull setting, um, and a brighter setting, Remember, it's still changing a little bit on Y because I'm changing my um, uh, waveform as Y changes. If I wanted to, I could use a fixed uh, setting here and um, do something similar. In fact, let me, let me try that since uh, Y goes from 0 to 1 over here. So now I'll have a fixed setting on A for both of them. The sound will probably be a little different, but, but now it'll be the same thing all over. Y is really taken out of the equation, and the only thing that's controlling that sound now is the setting of my barrel. And now if I go all the way down, now the, the setting of the barrel, the text kind of makes perfect sense now, because everything is playing statically, um, but now I'm uh, more of a synth synthesizer kind of sound. I don't have that much dy dynamic change going on uh, the way I did in the, in the last patch. So that's a simple way to, um, to create the barrels. Uh, now, of course, uh, I could do something uh, let's put our Y back here, for example. If I'd have changed um, the uh, the formula here uh, to use a range of 0 to 127 instead of a scaled value of 0 to 1, now I'm going to be sending pretty large values into this uh, modulation index. And you'll see um, it really... They're, they're over one now. They can get, you know, to about a 64 in the middle here. And you'll see I'm really just modulating the heck out of that thing. Uh, perhaps that's a sound I might want in certain situations, but uh, not really in this one. So I found that most of the time, uh, unless I'm dealing with things that need MIDI-like um, representations, the range 0 to 1 is uh, the more useful uh, barrel uh, formula for me, but uh, again, it could be uh, u used the other way to great effect, too. Uh, and I can create up to uh, four of these things uh, in this manner uh, if I have that many parameters that I need to control. Um, Maybe uh, something we might try doing here is uh, setting up a pedal. What I have also is a, a switched pedal that when I press down, it basically turns on, and when I lift my uh, fo foot up, it turns off. If you notice here, um, I have the option uh, of two pedal connections to the continuum. 
I'll keep my sustain pedal there since I might want to keep that function. And in the uh, the second uh, sostenuto pedal, uh, what I'll do there is you see if I click on it, I can associate that with different things. I'll associate that pedal with, say, barrel two. Okay. Um, and in, in this case, I'll go down, click my little house, and I'll set up, edit. See, it puts these... Uh, uh, parentheses in uh, more than I, I want. I'm not sure why it's doing that on me, um, but I just get rid of them. And let me set up at the second uh, barrel, and I'll set that to, uh, I'll say on, off, pedal. Okay, done. Uh, what I don't really want this um, graphic now because this is really a switch as I'm defining it. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my uh, list of uh, barrel styles. Let me see here. There's a switch style there, and there's this cool little uh, function here. It's number 45. So let me go back, and I'll edit this, and I'll put underscore 45 in, and done. Okay. All right. Now... Uh, Let's see. Uh, there, I switched my pedal, and now the pedal is uh, associated with this thing. And as I press the pedal down, you'll see the switch goes down. And when I press my pedal up, switch goes up. And if I want, I can associate that with something that's going to uh, turn on my sound. Um, let's let's try that. Okay, uh, let's click on A again and perhaps what we want to do here is uh, do this in such a way that I'll get only the sine tone playing except when I press my foot down and when I press my foot down I'll close the switch and then I want my modulation to take over all right let's see if we can do something like that uh, now, one of the ways I, I can do that is to play with this uh, ancillary function we haven't talked about yet. So, uh, let's think about this. R I need something to multiply W times a pedal with so that um, it's zero when the pedal's up, which will basically... Um, Turn off my modulation, all right, and one, w which will give me full modulation uh, when the pedal's down, all right. All right, let's do that. So now let's uh, think about this. Um, the ancillary function is applied to your main function. So what I can do is I've set this up so that W is is set by the value of this first barrel. But what I'm going to do here is say that my W component uh, times whatever I have in the B formula is what's going to be evaluated as the formula for A. So in other words, you can you can associate a secondary formula to the primary formula uh, with a number of operations. You can either multiply ha or have an absolute multiply, divide, subtract, power, log, a lot of different stuff. So you can uh, uh, create a very complex f kind of compound-like formula by doing this. But what I'll do is I'll just multiply it times the value of B. So w with B, I'll go in and basically set my um, uh, W function up to whatever is in the second uh, barrel. And that second barrel we know is going to be controlled by my foot. All right. So um, 
what I'll do is also set this to 1. Let's do that. Because this is going to be multiplied times whatever my foot is. And my foot's either going to be 0 or, uh, or 1. Now, I'm going to set this, though, this one I'm going to set to range 0 to 127. And go back here to my setting for the pedal. I want that pedal to be either 0 or a value, the max value of 1, a real max value of 1. Okay? Uh, so, now what will happen is A, all right, when my pedal is up, should be multiplied times B, which should be 0 because the, the pedal's up. And hopefully, if I play, this will have like 0 modulation. Well, that was not what I expected. I expected to get a sine tone out. And let me see why. And I can see immediately why. Because I set B incorrectly. Now, how might I tell that from what's going on in the screen here? I didn't say this before, but if you notice the formulas, uh, it's very nice in the way that little indications here tell you uh, little notes about what parts of the formula is actually being used. So you'll see in the first setting A here, it's using the first barrel. It's also using a Y component. The others are not being used. In the second formula B, it's also using the first barrel. But wait a minute, I wanted to set that to the second barrel. So let me go back to B and see what happened here. Yeah, see, this was really supposed to be set to the second barrel, which is the one that's controlled by the pedal. Now, hopefully, this is should do what I want. When I play the keyboard, or the, excuse me, the fingerboard, yeah, now I'm only going to get a sine tone out because it's only when I press the pedal that, I, that this multiplier to B is going to kick in and basically multiply by one giving me the value that I expect. So let me let me play without the pedal. Now let me press the pedal. As I press the pedal. Hey, that could be very useful to allow me to allow me to create sounds that kick certain components in and out based on using a pedal, and um, I think that works really well. So that's probably enough for us to talk about now. We, we, we saw how we can create barrels, uh, multiple barrels. We saw how we can assign them uh, these uh, nice different graphics that are associated with a function that might make more sense in the default setting. And we also talked about how we can chain a formula to another formula through the use of this ancillary function. Uh, that's plenty for today. Uh, next time, maybe we'll continue and talk about how to use the gen dials and maybe go into a little more sound design based on the patch that we have. Till the next time. <laughs>